Hello again, it's Jimmy here already. So here I have another Vauxhall Vivaro or Renault Traffic. This one is a uh, pretty much the same story, but a little bit different because I have here some parts that have been changed over the last few weeks. So the first part we have here is a map sensor. Looks like manifold absolute pressure sensor. And this one is a airflow airflow sensor. And we've also got three of these turbo upstream pressure sensors that have been changed. Okay, so if I'm in the van with the engine on, we've got check anti-pollution system. Uh, let's see what else have we got. Check injection system. Uh, I think that's about it. Okay, so this is a Vauxhall version, but it's the Renault traffic is the same van. I'm going to use this scan tool here. Is the Launch UK Euro Tab Three? Do intelligent diagnostic. We'll wait for this to connect. Do a high speed scan. Okay, let's see what we're looking at. Multiplex network. Okay, we've got an external temperature sensor. Fault. Battery disconnection, open circuit. Okay, so it's, it's got a battery disconnection fault there. So let's have a look and see if we have the external temperature sensor working. We go through, should get it maybe up here. There we go, 11 degrees. So it looks like that's working. So that might have just been because of the battery disconnection. We'll know in a minute once we clear the codes, we'll see if that fault returns. Okay, let's go back here. Next one we have starter relay. Not worried about that. Differential pressure sensor circuit, implausible signal. So that's the DPF pressure sensor. Turbo upstream pressure sensor, outside limit, and uh, cruise control. All right, let's go in here and have a look at some live data. First thing I'm going to look for is upstream pressure. And then we'll do engine speed. Okay, now we'll graph those. And we want to see a similar pattern on both sides here. Okay, so that's not reading whatsoever, it's just flatlined. Uh, let's go to what else were we looking at? Differential pressure sensor. Particle filters pressure is zero. Let's give that a rev again. So that's also flatlining. So the engine speed is going up, but none of these are moving. Right, so that's a bit strange. We've got two sensors that are not responding whatsoever. I see a little bit of leakage from here. The sensor, so the bracket's been bent. And it's not fitted correctly. He said this was in Vauxhalls. Okay, other people have looked at it after. So what I'm going to do is disconnect that plug. It's from the upstream pressure sensor. It's hard to see in the sunlight, but yeah, it's not moved. It's not made any difference there. So let's try one of these sensors from the bag here. Now I know the blue one was the original sensor that the van had fitted. Then it's had these other three black ones fitted afterwards. So I'm just going to fit this one back. This is the original one and we'll see was this 
is this sensor working? Or what was going on? I don't know why all the sensors have been changed. So we get that clicked in. You can see there we've got movement. And I'm gonna use a MIDI vac and we'll connect it up to that sensor there. So just like that. Now we'll put some pressure into that. See does that sensor move? Yeah, it does. So we know we're not looking at a circuit fault or a wiring issue. We know the sensor is working. Um, the, the sensor that's been fitted on here is faulty and we may need to unblock the pipe properly as well. Okay, here is the DPS itself. I'm just going to try and have a look. I was hoping to maybe find one of these pipes burst. That doesn't look like it's the case. It's had a, an aftermarket sensor put on is that plugged in properly yet so we probably got the same same carry on down here is um, probably another faulty sensor I'll be honest looks like the one at the top is a faulty sensor and this one's probably also another faulty sensor okay so I do carry some DPF pressure sensors in here just gonna have a look through see what I've got and hopefully we've got something that'll fit okay so I've got this sensor off got this one from the van here and um, we'll just temporarily we're not going to bolt that in for a minute we're just going to put it there and have a look at the live data and if, if this doesn't work we'll check the circuit of the wire in here but I doubt that that's an issue because it all looks okay I think someone's just put a dozzy sensor on here okay back in the van engine running You can see there now we have both of these working but we do have a very blocked EPF uh, so hopefully we'll be able to save that by cleaning it so now we're checking the holes here someone's already put you can see their new pipe new clamps it's already had all of this replaced just make sure anyway that it's not blocked put a gauge on it check the pressure that's okay so all this needs is the old sensor putting back on. Okay, so that's the sensor, the new one. Get rid of that new one. This is the old original sensor, we're gonna put that back on. That's the faulty Febby sensor. That was a part number for that. So those two parts are faulty. Uh, I can see that is, it looks like it's an original part as well though, this one. But it is a different color. So maybe it's just incompatible, I'm not sure. So just get this fitted back on and just straighten back out that bracket so it's going to sit back in place like that and in my drawer here i've got loads of these little clips this is what's missing from this van here so we'll get this put on I'll just push that in there okay now we've got all that fitted back on now if i come back in to the live data we're going to take off the differential pressure for a minute because we just want to concentrate on this one go to the graph again so you remember before we had this this side was flatlining. Now if we give it a rev, you can see it goes up and down in pretty much the same sort of fashion. So now that's confirmed that that's working. What the next one we're gonna concentrate on now is, so we're gonna remove that, uh, sorry. Yeah, speed. Can go. Oh no, actually we'll leave that and we'll do the upstream pressure we're going to remove and we're going to put back on the DPF differential pressure. That one. So now we're going to be looking at these two, which is the DPF pressure. You can see that goes up to 700 pressure. I mean that should only be around about 100 there. And then at idle, you can see as it warms up now, the engine was off. If we warm this engine up, that DPF pressure is going to keep increasing. Now you can see there, after a couple of revs, we're sitting at 160 millibars now. If I hold it up, you can see it's getting close to 900 now. And the engine's only been on a minute, so it will increase even further than that. It's coming down a little bit there. See where that settles, sort of around 135. 
Alright, so we're going to try and clean the DPF out. Where we'd like to see this sitting is 6 or 8 millibars or, or even less. Okay, so we've got some bottles of these. They are very dirty just because they're constantly rolling around in there. But um, this is from Launch UK. This one's a bit battered. Launch UK DPF cleaning fluid. We're going to get a mixture of this in here. Now this one is already pre-mixed. So we put 50% water in it and 50% of the fluid. So what I'll do is I'll reuse these bottles by um, just get some pre-mixed bottles ready that I'm going to use for today. And then we can get this inserted into the DPF and hopefully that's going to clean it down for us. This attachment will go on top. Okay, so now we're back under here at the DPF pressure sensor. Disconnect the holes on this side, which is the larger diameter holes, and we're going to get the cleaning fluid put in there. If you look at these hoses, this one goes to the front of the DPF. So the filter starts round about here somewhere. And then you've got the second hose which comes after it. And that just reads the difference of the pressure between the two sides. Squeeze the trigger. Get all of this fluid pushed in. And empty the full litre of this in here. Now so just hold the revs close to 3000 as possible so we can keep an eye on the pressure. You can see there it's come down from sort of 350 area. Just hold these revs there for a minute or two. So, not even a minute's gone past yet. I think we're, looks like we're down where we need to be. Let's see where we are at idle. It's a little bit high on idle still. That will come down though. See so, you now at 3000 RPM, we're only sitting around 60 millibars, 60 to 70. So now we're in a good enough area. I will go to special functions on here. And we're going to do adapters after replacing the particle filter. And that's done, we can clear all of these fault codes. So we've got those four. And that one for the cruise control. Clear the faults. front have gone. Go back to the data stream now and we'll have a look at the soot. Probably should have showed you this one as well before that would have been somewhere between 30 to 60 millibars or grams but yeah there we go that's still still on there so we now when we take it for a drive we should see that come down. Okay see these numbers coming down. Okay, so now that I've just drove it around the block, I'm just going to hold the rev stationary here for a minute until we can see those grams of soot come down as far as possible. We are within tolerance range now, under 6 grams. We'll get the engine speed up here so you can see where I am. Three thousand RPM, thereabouts. Ok, 
Okay, so it looks like it's going to come down to zero. Let's collect all the revs. And we are at three millibars, which is perfect. That's what a brand new DPF would look like. You can see all of the faults are gone from the dash. And we've sort of settled down at about 0 0.21 grams of soot there. And what we'll do now is just check to make sure we haven't got any more fault codes. And we don't. We'll clear the rest of those electronic faults that were relating to the battery disconnection. So we've got those two there and still in the memory. So now, like I said, loads of these different parts and sensors were changed. And I don't think what was happening is people weren't reading the live data. Um, so they don't know if the parts were being fixed or not. So like the customer said, this has been to Vauxhalls. They said that their diagnostic report was inconclusive and they wanted to authorise a few more hours of diagnostic procedures before they could go any further. Um, he didn't refuse to do that, he's brought it to loads of different garages and they've just been replacing all these parts and no one's got anywhere. Um, so yeah, in a space of like an hour or so here, we've managed to find all of the faults. Uh, luckily I've had some of the replacement parts that it needed in the van here and we've got those fitted and now the problem's all solved and we'll see you on the next video.